Erica, people living in two particularly crime-ridden neighborhoods are hopeful that just one new street light could mean a brighter future for their neighborhood. In one of the city's most dangerous neighborhoods. It has me uh, almost on, uh, on edge. Residents are convinced darkness lends a cover to crime. I think I'm always kind of trying to pay attention, but um, in the dark, I mean, it's just easier for someone to hide. Ryan Schaefer lives on Lynn Street in Hawville. Essentially, we have the one light that will work when it wants to. He says most of his neighbors don't turn on their porch lights at night. He won't go without it. I turn on my outside light at night and I turn off my living room light so that I can see through the window and people can't see me. Even when the street light is working, Schaefer says it's so dark at night he can't see his car parked in front of his house. People walk by here quite often. It'd be very easy to, you know, tamper with my car. Across town, Amy Harwell is hopeful the area she calls home will see one of the first new street lights. She's lived in the Martindale Brightwood neighborhood near 30th and Keystone for nearly 50 years. Say you're a criminal and you're coming along and you say, oh man, this is just the perfect spot for me to attack. These people won't see what I look like when I run or coming in. The exact time frame for installing the new lights isn't set. The city will use a pay-as-you-go system. The city plans to convert the 27,000 existing lights to LED technology starting in January. And the savings from that new technology will be used to install brand new street lights. These two Indianapolis residents are hopeful their streets will be lit up soon. Even the delivery guys, I think Domino's would appreciate some more lighting on the street um, because they can can't even see my house number. IPL is pointing to five factors the utility and the city will take into consideration when determining where to put the new lights. They are crimes against people, property crimes, crashes that involve pedestrians, the number of people with disabilities who live in the area, and the number of households that either don't have access or have limited access to cars. Reporting live, Katie Hines, RTV6.